So now we have a triangle mesh which contains triangles such as this one. And each of these triangles has a texture, a texture associated with it, and UV coordinates, and some normals on each vertex. And we want to now render that triangle to the screen. And that's the job of the video card hardware. It's really good at doing what it does. And it takes all of this information in the triangle mesh and then cuts each triangle up into little boxes just like this. And you can think of each box as one pixel on your screen. This process is called rasterization. For each box, it will run a program called a shader that will determine what color. So for example, this pixel will be colored green. What color should each pixel be? It takes all of the triangle information, runs the shader, and the shader computes what the color should be. So then the shader will take as input all of this information that will go into the shader. And then the shader will output the color for that pixel. And it will do this for every block that is inside the triangle, for every triangle that you see on the screen. And that's how shaders work. While I'm talking about shaders, I should mention that there are actually many kinds of shaders. The most standard model for shaders is that you have two kinds. You have fragment shaders and vertex shaders. They each have slightly different uh, jobs. And then together, these are actually called a fragment program and a vertex program. Together they make a shader. It's the fragment shader, the fragment program's job to determine what to do this work at. So this would actually be fragment shader. Fragment shader. And so it's the fragment shader that we're going to be working on for the next few videos. Vertex shader I will get to later probably when we cover animation. So then the big question is we know what pixel we want to render what is the UV coordinate for that pixel? And so we have to do a process that I covered in the previous videos where you do a linear interpolation. But the video card does all of that for us. So the video card will return for us the already interpolated UV and normals. And all we have to do is the calculations, whatever calculations we need to do to uh, output a color. So let's take a look at a very, very, very simple shader. And just note that I'm not going to get bogged down in the syntax of GS, GLSL versus HLSL. These are two different shader library, shader programming languages. One is used by OpenGL, the other by DirectX, and I'm sure there are others too. I'm not so concerned about the shader language. What we're going to look at, at is the mathematics that drives the shading languages. So if we take this data right here, the texture and UV, this is actually all we need to output a texture color. Most shader languages will have a texture function, which is called something like texture. And we pass it the ID of the texture that we want to render. I'm going to pretend that's called TID. And the UV coordinates, which have been interpolated, and texture will return to us a color value, whatever the texture is at that UV point. So this is a really simple shader. All you get is all you get is the base diffuse texture that is in that each triangle mesh has. But shaders can do so much more than that. Shaders, it's the job of the shader to calculate all of the lighting. So you need to know not only what the normals are, but where all the lights are. You might pass in the alpha value for this triangle. In other words, how opaque it is. That's the alpha value. You, need, you may need to know the color of this triangle. Maybe you want to color it red so it's glowing bright red or something. 
Shaders can do tons of really cool things. And so for the next video, we're going to take a look at Lambertian surfaces, which is how, which is the most basic way that lighting is calculated in shaders. So I'll see you next video.